Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me today. This is Carl Sussman, and you are tuned in to Insurance Hour, where I will try and make things as easy as possible for you in the wonderful world of insurance. Making insurance easy. Yeah, that's going to be a challenge, but that's what I'm here for, and I'm up for the challenge. Please reach out to me anytime at 559-656-0317. Send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. Or if you need immediate help, dial pound 250 from your cell phone, use keyword insurance, and with a little bit of luck, you'll get someone to jump on the phone right away to be able to help you out. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about expectations for insurance policies. This is a heavily debated one because we have certain expectations of what our insurance policy covers, what it should cover, what we're paying for, is there value for it, and why we have to have it, and why we're forced to have it. La, 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 I want to talk about why we have this perception that we do, why we feel the way we do about the insurance policies that we pay for, and most importantly, what we can do to try and, I don't want to say combat those feelings because those feelings are natural and they make sense. They make sense to me. And if they make sense to me, they definitely make sense to everybody else. So let's start out by talking about being forced to do something. Does anybody like to be forced to do anything? I know I don't. That's probably on my top 10 list of things I like the least is something mandatory. What do they call it? Death and taxes. No matter what, you know, you're going to get hit with both of them. Well, in most cases, when you're purchasing an insurance policy, I shouldn't say most cases. Well, maybe it is. You are forced to purchase an insurance policy. If you're buying a home, for example, you are forced to purchase a fire insurance policy because the lender that's lending you that chunk of money wants to be sure that their asset, their collateral is protected in the event of a loss, right? So if you're borrowing money from them, they want to be sure that the protection is there in place in the event something happens to their collateral. You're being forced to do that. (sighs) Forced. Well, how about your car? Well, most people, when they purchase a car, they will get a loan on the vehicle. Same idea. You're going to be required by the bank to get insurance on the vehicle. They'll even dictate uh, sometimes what deductibles you're allowed to have because, again, they want to be sure that in the event that there's some type of damage or theft of that vehicle, their collateral that they gave you money for to purchase that vehicle is protected. Again, you're being forced to do it. Let's take it another step. What about health insurance? Nobody's forcing you to buy health insurance, or are they? Well, we know that in most places, if you get sick, you can go to the hospital with or without insurance. What's going to happen? Well, one of a few things. They're supposed to see you. They're supposed to take care of you. Now, they're also going to send you a great big bill. What are you supposed to do with that bill? Well, pay it, negotiate for it. Most of the time, those bills are going to be significantly higher than you could possibly imagine when you get them. We're talking about the $12 $12 for a box of Kleenex and, and things like that that you've seen. And yeah, you're supposed to pay for that. And if you don't, there could be potential legal ramifications because you owe that money. Now, there are other types of coverage that you get. I don't want to say coverage, but there's certain other times when you might actually be able to have coverage from the state. And again, this depends on what state you're in. This could have to do with your income. It could be whether you're on Medicare There are certain other factors that could come into play where potentially you would have coverage for health-related issues without being forced, I'm using that word again, to purchase a health insurance policy. So while there's no mandate that specifically says you must purchase health insurance or else, we are certainly given a pretty stiff incentive to purchase it because if something does happen to us, we know we're going to have massive financial expenses coming at us. Massive to the tune of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, a lot. We're not talking about a few dollars. We're talking about potentially bankruptcy type dollars coming at us that we're going to have due. So it's not unusual that people will look at having to purchase health insurance as a forced, I'm forced to purchase health insurance. Even though you see where I'm going with this. You don't necessarily have to, but man, is it? there sure are some penalties if you don't. 
So we automatically have this negative feeling against being forced to do anything. Heck, we're Americans. We do what we want. Land of the free. You know, you know, we can take the risks we want and pay the consequences like we want to. Unfortunately, sometimes people will make choices that are, they seem good at the time. They turn out not to be so good. And then they sort of want to rewind things and, and get some help. An example of that might be someone that might decide to not purchase, let's say, for example, earthquake insurance. And then there's a significant earthquake and they have damage. Well, now they're going to say, I don't have the money to rebuild. What am I going to do? They're going to look for government assistance programs and potentially a situation where they're going to go to the SBA to try and get a loan to rebuild. Well, I don't know about you, but I like the idea of paying a little bit of money for an insurance policy and having my home rebuilt versus having to pay interest on a loan that I have to pay back. That's just me. Am I forced to purchase earthquake insurance? Well, I'm not forced to do it, but it certainly makes sense to do it. Once again, we're walking this fine line between what we're forced to do versus what it just makes sense to do. And sometimes those feelings can get sort of slam together. We're not quite sure how to parse them out or tease out the difference between what we're forced to do and what we just intellectually recognize is the right thing to do. You follow me? How about flood insurance? Now, there are some areas where, again, back to the banks, the lender will say, if we're going to give you money for that house because of the location of the house, you must have flood insurance. Well, that's a definite must. That's a definite you are being forced to do something. Now, what if you're in an area that does not have that requirement? and you don't purchase flood insurance, and there's a flood. You see where I'm going with this. We're going to be going for government assistance, potentially. Or if you can financially deal with it yourself, you're going to be out a lot of money to make repairs. So are you forced to purchase that policy, even if a lender doesn't require it? Well, not really. But yet again, there's a pretty strong reason that it makes sense financially for you to purchase that flood insurance policy. It makes sense because it's going to have the potential to save you a lot of money if there is a loss. That's the general concept of insurance, right? What's the likelihood that I'm going to have a financial loss? Can I weather that storm myself? Excuse the pun. Or not. If I can weather that storm myself, if I'm willing to take that exposure myself, then I need to be prepared to pay for those damages myself. Now, what happens in a situation where someone can't afford the insurance? Well, they certainly can then not be expected to pay for the loss, right? So they're getting hit twice because they're in a situation where they can't purchase the insurance because they don't have enough money. Then there's a loss. And then they're in a position where they can't rebuild or do what they need to do because they obviously don't have the money. They're going to go again, once again, to the state, potentially for assistance. And likely, may, they may not even be able to qualify to get a loan to try and do those repairs. The lesson to try and take away from there is we might look at purchasing an insurance policy and say that is just really expensive. And some people might opt not to purchase it in those situations where that's an option. And then you want to step back and say, all right, it upsets me, it pisses me off that I'm forced to do this, or it pisses me off that I feel like if I don't do this, I'm making a poor decision and then make the right decision. Because sometimes, even though it feels so uncomfortable, because you feel like it's not fair and you feel like you shouldn't have to do this, you shouldn't have to spend so much money, it is going to be less money to purchase that insurance policy than it's going to be in the event there's a loss. Also remember, the higher your premium, that is indicative of an insurance company or many insurance companies, whatever is the case, looking at the potential for there being a loss as being higher. So the higher your premium, that means that the big brains, the people with all the actuarial data, all the numbers, all the prior claims, all the prior history of everything, when it comes to insuring things, they've looked at your exposure and they've determined that's a higher exposure than normal and they're going to charge you more than you would be expecting. If the premium was super cheap, the likelihood is you're probably less likely to have a loss. That's how it works. Higher risk, higher premium. So you have to also realize 
that when you're looking at your insurance premium, if it's higher than it is than it was, let's say, five years ago, that might not just be because of issues such as inflation and labor shortages and things of that nature. It might be simply because your risk is a higher risk than it was a few years ago. There are people that are in certain areas where they live that never have that. How do I say this? There are people that are in areas where weather events had not typically been an issue. Now, all of a sudden, those areas, weather events are an issue. And they're not an issue once every blue moon. They're an issue every year, maybe several times a year. So it's not just a matter of, do you, are you forced to buy the policy and the resentment that might come from that? There's also an element of resentment and frustration when you realize that where you bought that house, to use that as an example, might not have been a very high risk when you purchased it, but now, however many years later, because the premium has gone up so much, you can read into that and say, well, maybe the premium has gone up that much because now the potential loss and the potential risk of a loss in this house is a lot higher. Let's talk a little bit more about that when we come back. In a tough California insurance market, you need expert guidance. Trust Sussman Insurance Agency with a legacy of understanding complex coverage needs. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Treating clients like family for two generations. Hello, hello. This is Carl with Insurance Hour. Thanks once again for being here with me and learning about all things insurance. Remember, I love when you call me and send questions because if you have a question, the likelihood is other people that are listening are going to have that same question. So don't be shy. Give me a call, 559-656-0317 or send an email to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need something immediately, you can even dial pound 250 on your cell phone, use the keyword insurance, and then you'll get connected to someone that can help you right away, in theory. Before the break, we were talking about resentment about insurance. We really were. We have resentment against being forced to do things. We certainly have resentment against being forced to do things that cost us money. Purchasing insurance policies do both of those things, as we talked about in, in the majority of cases. We're forced to purchase insurance because banks require it. We're forced to purchase insurance because some third party requires it. I'll give you another example. People that are entering into a business arrangement, let's say you're opening up a business and you are the you are the sole proprietor of this business. The business does not exist without you. Maybe you're starting a YouTube channel. Maybe you're opening a bakery. You are the baker, right? The business doesn't exist without you. Perhaps you're an attorney. You're opening up a law firm. You are the only attorney. If you're going to go to a third party like a bank and say, okay, I want money to start this business. What do you think the bank's going to say? They're going to say, okay, well, we can look at the situation. We can look at the possibility of lending you money, but what happens to us if you die? The business disappears. They might require you purchase life insurance in order to qualify for that business loan. <sighs> Head explodes. Now, you might not have thought about this before. People that get loans find this out all the time. People that, re, that will get an SBA loan for starting a business will probably see this more often than not because there are guidelines in place that say, depending on how much insurance, I'm sorry, how much money you are borrowing, there are limits to how much you can borrow if you are a sole proprietor before you are required to purchase life insurance. Here it is again, required, forced, have to, our least favorite words of the alphabet and the English language. Try to separate the two. Try to separate the fact that it might actually make sense sometimes to purchase a policy from the fact that you're being forced to do it. If you take one thing away from today's show, I want you to take that away. That just because something is being forced on you, it doesn't mean it's bad. And that's a tough pill to swallow, I know. I know, again, I'm speaking personally. I don't like to be forced to do things. I don't like to have to spend money. I certainly am happy when it, it turns out that what I was forced to spend money on turned out to be good. But for the most part, at that moment in time, I'm not happy. You need to be sure that when you're looking for an insurance policy, 
if you're being required to purchase an insurance policy, if the premium has gone up on your insurance policy, and you're in this position of, do I pay this higher premium or do I not have an insurance policy? And sometimes that's actually a choice that people are making because there's not always a loan, for example, on a house, or perhaps their car doesn't have a loan. They've paid off the loan on that car. They're making a decision as to whether they can bankroll the potential of losing that asset. It's always interesting to me when I realize that if you have a home and there's a loan, you have part of that home is an asset and part of that home is a liability, right? And by the way, not a financial planner, disclaimer, all that good stuff, meaning there's a part of that home that you owe money on and that's the liability. You owe that money. The asset is the value of the property minus that loan you have on it. You could call it equity. You could call it the market value, whatever you want to call it. There's a part of that property that you actually have as an asset. And as you pay down your loan over 20 years, 30 years or worse, if you've refinanced it, it could be even longer. As you're paying that loan down, what happens is those two asset types flip. In the beginning, you have a large loan and therefore the asset value is smaller and the debt value, the liability is larger. And as you pay that loan down, now you have more asset value and less loan. Then you get to that golden moment where you've actually made your last payment on your home and you no longer have a loan. So guess what? The ability that the, you must carry property insurance, that goes away. You are no longer being forced because there's no other entity or bank saying you have to protect that collateral. So people say, hey, yay me, now I won't have to have insurance. And I'm saying, whoa. So you're telling me that now that 100% of your, of your property is all an asset, now you don't want to protect it? It seems completely backwards to me. I understand you were forced to purchase it before, but now that you own it free and clear, every penny of that value is an asset. It's, it has value to you. That is the last time. That is the absolute worst time for you to then, then decide, I won't protect it. Why would you do that? Well, again, I think it gets back to that same feeling. We were forced to do something for so long that our human nature is the minute we don't have to do it anymore, we want to stop. And this is an example of when that's the absolute wrong thing to do. Because now that it's an asset, now that it's worth every penny of it would go into your pocket. Ha ha, taxes. I get it. Ha 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 ha. I'm talking in general terms, so cut me some slack. When, the, when you no longer have to pay a third party, other than your taxes, for an asset, why would that be the time you want to stop protecting that asset? That's the last time you would ever want to stop. That's the last situation where it would make sense to me anyway to stop protecting that asset. Even if the insurance cost has gone up double, triple, four times, five times. That's just insane, right? That's just crazy. Why would I want to spend five times what I used to over the last 30 years on my insurance when I don't even have a loan on it and they're not forcing me anymore? Well, again, let's separate the emotion from the finance. The emotion says, you know what? I won't say it again. It's a word I wouldn't use on the show. But the financial end of me says, okay, I understand that the weather patterns have changed. I understand that costs to rebuild have changed. I understand that labor has changed, land value, permitting, all sorts of things have changed over the length of time I've been living in this property. And that, yes, it is going to cost more money for me to actually be able to go and rebuild this house in the event of a loss. I had somebody on from an architecture firm a few weeks ago, and she was talking about the costs and the timeline just to get permits. And this was in, in the urban town, right? This is not out in the middle of nowhere. This is in the middle of the city. For an average house in the middle of the city, you're looking at, if I remember correctly, 20, 30, 40, thousand dollars just in permits permits hello that's the paper that's not even your house 
That's the bureaucracy portion that you have to go through. And not talking about this happening overnight. We're talking about weeks or potentially months to get those permits approved before you can even start rebuilding your home. So imagine you have a loss. That asset was 100% yours. There was no longer any loan on it. So of course you want to rebuild it. Well, you have to do it out of pocket. And before you even start, you're going to be looking at tens of thousands of dollars before you can even begin the foundation of your house. So now that premium that went up five times from what you were paying before, that really irked you, that really pissed you off. Now all of a sudden you're saying, well, I can see to some extent why that price went up. I can see why this area might be more of a risk than it was 30 years ago when I moved here. So don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Understand that insurance is not personal. It's not about you against them. It's not about anything other than finance. It's discounted dollars. You pay X number of dollars, and in the event of a loss, you have a large pot of money that's going to pay for your loss. That's pretty general, but you get the idea. And if you want to say, well, what if I never have a loss? Remember, an insurance policy is not a savings account. You shouldn't expect a return on your money. It's a safety net. It's there in the event of a loss. And again, loss is bad, so we would prefer to avoid that. So what could be worse? You have a loss, which is something bad that we want to avoid, and then you don't have the means to correct or to try and recover from that loss because you don't have an insurance policy. That just goes from bad to worse to very worse. Is that even a word? Very worse? Worst than worse? The worst of the worst? I don't know. I'm sure there'll be some English major that will uh, call me and yell about uh, how I'm botching this. But you see what I'm saying? While I understand and feel the increases of insurance premiums across the board, home insurance, car insurance, health insurance, life insurance, disability insurance, long-term care insurance, the list goes on and on and on. I'm also in the position of seeing people when they have claims if they don't have the right insurance in place or they don't have any insurance in place. We read articles about it. We hear about it on the news. 20 seconds, there'll be a clip that says, oh, there was a major storm in XYZ state and there were all these people that didn't have insurance because they claimed they couldn't afford it. And then it's done. The story ends and we've changed the channel and we move on to the next thing. You realize life doesn't go on that quickly for all of those people. They might have decided, maybe I should have tried to figure out a way to keep some type of an insurance policy in place, some type of coverage in the event there's a loss, something in the event that something bad happens. Nobody expects it to be them, right? It's always the other guy. It's always the other girl. It's always the other person that is having a loss. It's not going to be you. You're a safe driver. Well, as you can guess, there are other cars on the road and not so safe other drivers out there. If you've ever honked your horn or used profanity against another driver, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. People are not all courteous and good drivers, right? You need to have protection for that, even if it costs more money than it used to. Actually, you need to have protection for that because it costs more in the event of an accident. And that's one of the reasons why the premium you're paying has gone up. So don't be angry at the process. Don't be angry at the system. We're putting you in a position where you have to choose between doing something that costs money and we'll push aside the whole have to or not have to and that we've beaten that horse to death. Don't make the wrong decision about an insurance policy because you can't see the potential of what it can do for you. And because you feel like, I don't have to, so I, therefore I won't. That, that doesn't always make sense. Just because you're forced to do something, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. And the same thing goes with an insurance policy. If you're forced to purchase it, that doesn't make it the wrong choice. And if you're not forced to purchase it, not having it doesn't automatically become the right choice. Does that make sense? I hope some of this, you can relate to this because I know that 
dealing with clients every day the way I do, people get frustrated. They get annoyed. They get very angry at seeing their premiums go up. And sometimes it's just a matter of having a little conversation or a long conversation to explain that, first of all, this is not personal. And second of all, you need to understand that if it's costing more, that's because it would cost you more. That's all there is to it. There's no extra gravy that's somehow come out of this. If it's costing you a higher premium, that's because it's costing more in the event of a loss. And with that, keep that in mind. Make the right choices about your insurance policy. And we'll talk again soon. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. The show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.